Good evening, everyone. We will call the October 2021 meeting to order, and we'll start with the Pledge of Allegiance. Well, good evening, everyone. I'm filling in for Tammy Ryber here this evening, and it's been a little while since I've done this, so I'll try to shake off the rust and the dust, and we'll see if we can make it through this evening. We will start with the roll call in item 2.1 for members being present. Okay, And we've got uh, Mr. Iverson here, uh, Ms. Moulton, uh, Carrie Laura here is here, and then we have Tammy Ryber on the phone all present this evening. We'll move to item 2.2 with conflicts of interest. Are there any that need to be reported at this time? Hearing none, we'll move to item 2.3 with the review and approval of the agenda. Is there a motion? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item 2.3 has been approved. We'll move to item 2.4, and we'll seek a motion to approve the minutes of the September 13th, 2021 board meeting. So moved. Motion by Mr. Iverson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Lohr. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, uh, excuse me, uh, we had a second. Uh, all those in favor? All right. Aye. Okay. Uh, all those opposed? Item 2.4 has been approved. We'll move to item 2.5, and we will receive the financial reports for September 2021. Thank you. In the general fund, a small amount of tax proceeds along with federal funding was reported. September state aid payment was received in October, and therefore next month um, the report will accommodate two remittances. The state aid amount will be adjusted into next month as enrollment numbers for FY22 were confirmed at month end. This fund's ending cash position reflects a decrease when compared to the prior year due to the coronavirus relief funds receded in September of 2020. The revenue and capital outlay in special education consisted of the typical September property taxes along with interest income. In the fund of capital outlay, this fund's ending cash position is relatively consistent with that of the prior year when the remaining certificate allocation from, for the remodel of the high school is retained from the balance. Special education's ending cash position this month is slightly higher than last fiscal year. It is noted that this fund may require short-term borrowing throughout the year. Lake Area Tax revenue operation consisted of tuition and fees in relation to the first semester. Expenditures exceeded revenue for the month as typical for September. This fund's ending cash position reflects an increase over the previous two years. In the operation of K-12 nutrition services, due to the replenishing of food inventory, the expenditures exceeded the revenue for the month as typical for September. This fund's ending cash position reflects an increase when compared to the prior year. Lake Area's bookstore had sales continue to be strong as a direct reflection of the number of students attending LATC and the first semester activities. The expenditures include the replenishing of inventory. This fund's ending cash position reflects an increase but is difficult to compare due to the varying inventory levels. Other activity included operations of LATC food service and Educare in which both funds reflect, it, reflect significant cash balance increases as a result of CARES funding accommodations to support revenue loss in support of the program throughout through the pandemic. I would be happy to answer any questions should you have any. Questions? Well, thank you for being here. We appreciate it. And we will move to item 2.6, student staff recognition. Uh, we do not have any at this point, but uh, we anticipate after some state activities finishing up that we will have some next month uh, as we had some success last week at both golf and tennis. So yeah, exciting. All right. Thank you. Well, we will move then to item 3.1 and seek any public input on agenda or non-agenda non -agenda items for Lake Area Technical College. Okay. Moving to 3.2. Um, and welcoming President Cartney. Uh, yes, sir, just on 3.2. 3 
I uh, wanted to note that there, there will be a work session for the school board with LATI's Strategic Advisory Council. That will be October 21st from noon to about 2 o'clock, um, and that will be in room 433 at Lake Area Tech. Uh, that meeting is open to the public. Okay, just making sure I've got it on my schedule. I do. All right, excellent. And we will then move on to item 4.1 with personnel and item 4.1.1, resignations. Uh, yes, sir, you'll see uh, resignations as presented. There is uh, uh, one additional one that's noted up, up on the screen for uh, Stephanie Johnson. We recommend your approval of those resignations as presented. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the resignations as presented? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? The resignations have been approved. We'll move to item 4.1.2, contract recommendations. Uh, yes, sir. You'll see in front of you a, a number of contract recommendations and addendums. Those are fairly typical for this time of year, given the, uh, the increase in, in this uh, freshman class. It's the largest freshman class that we've ever had. Um, there is one note, and that is uh, because of an illness with one of our instructors, we do have some additional English uh, requirements that are portrayed. We recommend your approval of those contract recommendations and addendums. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the uh, contract recommendations as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the contract recommendation. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. All those opposed? That motion carries. Thank you. Right, moving on to item 4.2.1 with the consider the equipment bid recommendations. Uh, yes, sir. Based upon uh, uh, an allocation from the legislature, we have a number of um, items that, that we put out for bid this month. We'd like you to, to consider treating those as one package. Um, there were competitive bids received for the telehandle, telehandler, the scissors lift, and the concrete forms. Uh, we're recommending that you accept the lowest qualifying bid for each of those. And for the uh, Trimble GPS system, the dump truck, and the articulating truck, we received only one bid for those so we're again re recommending that you accept those bids as they were all acceptable and within the the budgets that we uh, recommended and then there were no bids received on the aircraft and the scaffolding um, so th uh, our normal course would be that we will uh, seek bids or we will negotiate uh, for those equipment and bring those back to the, to the board um, when we have a solution okay we recommend your your uh, approval of those of all those bids. Is there a motion to approve as presented? Uh, just to clarify, is that these seven that are listed? Yes, ma'am. Handler, rough terrain, concrete forms, GPS, dump truck, articulating off road truck, turning and machining center. Is that all those that included in this motion? I didn't see, I didn't see the turning system. Ellison Technologies. It, yes, ma'am. It, um, it is in there. I just I, I, I miss noting that, so I appreciate you bringing that forward. Okay, I just want to make sure I get the entire list here. Yes, ma'am. Okay. I move that we approve the bids as recommended from these one, two, three, four, five, six, seven companies. Six companies. Stan Houston's twice. Okay, we have a motion by Miss Moulton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Iverson. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is approved. Moving to item 4.2.2. Aye. Sorry. Yes, the, uh, uh, the Governor's Office of Economic Development allows their personnel to, to uh, office where they, are, uh, where they reside. Um, for that reason, we have the uh, two of their members that are residing in Watertown. Um, we're bringing forward a lease agreement for them to have an office at Lake Area Tech, and we recommend your approval of that lease agreement. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the lease agreement as presented? So moved. Motion by Mr. Iverson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion has been approved. 
Item 4.2.3, consider agriculture land lease agreement. Uh, yes, sir. The uh, Lake Area Tech has been partners with Al Raider since 2003 in leasing land for our uh, ag program uh, that served the, both the, uh, the, the school extremely well. Uh, this, we have in front of you the proposed uh, lease for 2022 at the sum of $8,100. Uh, we recommend your approval of that land lease. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the land lease as presented? I move approval of the agricultural land lease agreement as presented for 45 acres. Motion by Ms. Moulton. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mrs. Lohr. Uh, any questions, comments? Just a quick thank you to the Raider family. They've always been very generous. That's uh, greatly appreciated. Yes, sir. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? That motion has been approved. Item 4.2.4, .4, consider SDSU Better Choices, Beef, Better Health, Memorandum of Understanding. Uh, yes, sir. Lake Area Tech uh, received a grant from the Department of Health to expand our community health worker program. Uh, part of that grant is, is to train for better choices, better health curriculum, um, and to become a host site. In order to do that, we're working, uh, we need this Memorandum of Understanding with South Dakota State University, um, their extension office. Um, it outlines the terms of that agreement and, and the grant. We recommend your approval of that memorandum of understanding. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Motion by Mr. Iverson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item 4.2.4 has been approved. Moving to item 4.2.5, consider equipment leases. <laughs> Uh, yes, sir. As you, as you know, and, and as we've discussed before, uh, no-cost leases are really the backbone of Lake Area Tech's success with our students. It en enables um, our students to have the latest and greatest uh, equipment to work on. In this case, uh, Lake Area Tech recommends approval of two no-cost leases, one with, with cable equipment for tractor use in the diesel technology, and another lease with Titan machinery uh, for the use of an, a tractor in the ag program. Both these are no-cost leases, and we recommend your approval of these leases. Oh, my iPad just froze here, so I'm going to get over here. But uh, is there a motion to approve the leases as presented? I move we approve Kibble and Titan machinery leases at no cost. Is there a second? Uh, motion by Ms. Moulton. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Iverson. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The lease agreements have been approved as presented, and uh, we thank you to those uh, companies. I believe it was Kibble and uh, Titan. Titan Machine. Okay. Thank you. We appreciate that greatly. Uh, item 4.2.6, authorization to bid the diesel edition. Uh, yes, sir. As we move forward with our, our uh, build plan that was originally uh, put out in 2016, um, we're, we're ready to put out the diesel addition for bid. Um, we'd anticipate that going out for bid um, later in November, um, but uh, want to prepare, uh, have those documents prepared and out. Uh, that project will be an estimated $6.2 million uh, with a complete estimated projected completion date of fall of 2023. Uh, we request your authorization to bid the diesel addition. Okay, is there a motion to approve the authorization to bid the diesel edition? So moved. Motion by Mr. Iverson. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? That motion has been approved. And um, it appears that is it. Uh, President Cartney, Thank we you. appreciate it. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. All right. Uh, moving along to item 5.1. Is there anyone here from the public to speak on agenda or non-agenda items? We just wanted you guys to hear about um, what we are thinking about our new room service director. Okay. If you'd like to come to the microphone and state your name. 
Someone coming up here? Huh? Someone coming up here to speak on the mic? Uh, Mary Meyer, what else do I need to say? Well, if, if you had any comments, you're welcome to share. Just wanted to have your name on the record and make sure that everybody's able to hear if you had some specific comments. All right. Uh, we are just very disappointed in our new director. I don't know um, what you wanted us to say, oh. but. Go ahead. Just uh, note that personnel would be an executive session item, so if it's any sort of public comments about personnel that would not be heard at this time okay we just wanted the school board to maybe sit in if we we're gonna talk again sometime okay 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 thanks mary yep. thank you mary is there anyone else here to speak on uh, with public input on agenda or non-agenda items at this time. Okay, we will move on to item 5.2 with the Northeast Tech High School report. Okay, we did not meet this month as the superintendents will meet again in November. I believe that's November 2nd. And then the full board of Northeast Tech meets on October 20th, 545 for those board members who are uh, participating in that one. Okay. All right. We will move then to item 5.3 with the advisory update. <coughs> okay. Thanks. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone. I'm Brad Bransrud, principal at the high school, and with me I have Patty McClemens, assistant principal at the high school. Um, Patty's been working extensively with our advisory um, since we uh, started looking at the project about, what, a year, year and a half, yeah. two, years, two years ago? Uh, the advisory or the idea for the advisory has been uh, around the high school for a number of years. Um, it has come up most recently again um, as a result of some school improvement ideas, things that we needed to initiate at our high school in order to better serve our students. Um, information either through our Smarter Balance testing and surveys that were administered at the high school um, and outside of the high school to um, students, uh, teachers, and parents indicated that there was a uh, <clears throat> disconnect between some of our students, a, a larger population than we would want to. Um, and in trying to bridge that disconnect, that disconnection from our school and disconnection from some staff members, um, for example, one of the questions is, do you feel you have an adult um, that you can connect with at the high school. You know, when the answer comes up no on that one, that one really hurts us uh, because either through activities at school where a lot of kids grow uh, a pretty strong uh, feeling and connection for high school, uh, might be through a coach, uh, a director, um, a mentor, um, we wanted to make sure that that was available for all of our students. Uh, some of them, of course, work out in our community but what is that connection at school? And that's the purpose of the advisory, one of the purposes of the advisory, and there were many others. <clears throat> Patty, if you want to talk a little bit about the goals, I know you were on the creation of that. So we had an advisory committee that worked all of last year <clears throat> on if we were to have an advisory, what would that look like? What would some of our goals be? And one of our top goals was to be able to create a pos positive sense of belonging within our school. Um, support our students. We know uh, with through the pandemic and even prior to that, uh, there are a lot of social emotional needs that our students come to school with. And we really need to help support them so that they're academically more successful, productive in our community, and really have that witness to do whatever they want to do outside of high school, post-secondary. We're um, getting to be more of a diverse population within our school, so just valuing that diversity and, and um, celebrating those diversities within our school. 
And then just continuing to build those meaningful relationships, both inside and outside of school and with the families that we work with. Um, through our advisory program, I think you'll see that we are doing more to provide that academic support for our students so that they're able to be more successful in the classes that they're doing. And then just overall enhance our school culture, um, what it feels like to be in our building, um, like having students want to be in our building and stay in our building, um, just that positive culture that we want to, to build. Do you want me to talk about this? Yeah. Yep. Um, throughout our, act, our advisory activities, when our committee, there were about eight teachers that sat on this for a period of the entire academic year last year. Uh, we had multiple meetings. Uh, we, we ended up coming up with some activities that we wanted to be within our advisory program. Uh, we wanted our students to do some grade checks with their teachers. So you're going to see as we go through this presentation, there's going to be something called Check and Connect, and I'll explain that further as we go. We want to do some academic support, so some coaching with our students. So if there are some, some things that need to be taken care of in the classroom, what, we, what can we do as teachers to support that? And how can we help them get to, through the right avenue uh, to take care of some of those things academically? Uh, you'll see social-emotional learning lessons um, within our curriculum. Uh, team building, uh, it's big in team building and getting our students working together and understanding what that looks like uh, within our building and outside of our building. building. Uh, with our advisory program, we also incorporated some service learning projects uh, that our students will take uh, partake in. Uh, around December, we're going to be doing uh, across the building service learning projects. And then we have just some special events that take place and some games that they're doing within the advisory. Uh, the advisory, um, just a simple agenda that's put um, into place would be a couple of check and connects where teachers are not only using an advisory tool um, built into campus uh, to go in and take a look at things like missing assignments, uh, their grades and their progress in each class, their attendance. Um, it's also designed to sit down and have a, a brief conversation with the student to get to know them better. Um, kind of read the student, you might say, to see how are they doing in high school. Um, most students are functioning very, very well. Um, those are enjoyable conversations, and yet there are times when the conversations need to go a little bit deeper. Uh, there may be something going on in a student's life that maybe needs more attention. That's where the social-emotional lessons come in. Uh, sometimes referral to counselors, um, other professionals in the building work with these students as well. But that teacher as advisor is a uh, first point of contact in addition to the teachers that they have each day. Friday, um, team building, activity, kind of a fun day. Um, and that's basically how the agenda runs. There are special things that are brought in. For example, we did some door decorating for our homecoming week. Um, we're looking at trying to up the homecoming spirit. Um, our freshmen and sophomores and, and our juniors weren't in as much attendance over the years to come and do hall decorating on Sunday. And we found out that through our advisory, we had a very successful turnout. Kids were pretty excited and did a really nice job of decorating and having the building feel a little bit more like homecoming that week. The um, advisory structure, um, went through the committee, again, that was our uh, school improvement committee, to take a look at what would be best. They did a lot of uh, surveying other schools in our state, uh, taking a look at some national numbers and data. And what they came up with is that a advisory where we have the same grade level. Um, that also helps us administratively to administer some things, but it's also a more cohesive group. Uh, there are friends within that group. So we did stick with grade level. We are meeting for about 25 minutes, um, actually exactly 25 minutes each day uh, in our advisory. Uh, that is between 1.35 and 2 o'clock right now. Uh, part of that is set on Northeast Tech High School schedule in that we have kids going over there in the morning and we didn't really want to mess with that schedule. We also have three lunches happening right now at the school during the day, so that wasn't a good time to incorporate it. 
and we knew we didn't want to wait until the very last period of the day. So that's why right now we have advisory sitting at that time. We have approximately uh, 20 students in advisory. Uh, there are about 15, 15, 16, 17 advisories for each grade. Advisors, I should say. And right now, um, we will evaluate this uh, by the end of the year, but our thought is we will have our teachers loop with these, with these students for all four years. And so you really can uh, build some really solid relationships uh, by having students for that long and really having a general understanding of how they learn, what their needs are, uh, the supports that they might need along the way. When we had our committee with advisory, we took a look at and researched several uh, different curriculums and our group uh, did a rating of each looking at various uh, things from research to the how well the lessons were laid out for our staff, the diversity of things that we're going to be teaching, that sort of thing. And we landed on Character Strong. Um, Character Strong Company was actually founded by uh, John Norlin and Houston Craft. It's a rather new one. It's uh, 2016 is when the Character Strong uh, really, uh, they developed that Character Strong. The thing that we really liked about Character Strong is that the lessons are vertically aligned. So we might all be working on the same skill, but there is a different lesson for every grade level. So they're not going to get repeat lessons, that sort of thing. Um, our teachers have so far really enjoyed how it's laid out. It's very, uh, the people that put it together, obviously new teachers and how lessons should go using best practices and, and methodologies and teaching those lessons. Um, it teaches social emotional learning and our character education uh, side by side. So having those two things go hand in hand has been a very nice thing. Uh, we have uh, delved into some of the virtual assemblies that the Character Strong provides, and this is uh, more to do with like character development. So uh, this week, I know their focus is on kindness. There is a well put together virtual assembly, much like if you were going to a motivational speaker, and then there's some reflection and discussion that takes place with their advisor. And then we also have what's called a Character Strong Gym, and teachers can go in, and we we did lay it out for teachers for the whole year, but they can go in and find. Um, just an abundance of different team building activities to suit their needs, whether working with small groups or whole groups, um, they're able to go in and, and take a look at those. We did do a half a day training with our teachers to start the school year with. Um, it was very well done. Uh, it took teachers through the whole program, how to teach it with fidelity, um, those sorts of things. And then we've also been uh, doing check-ins with our teachers. Uh, we just recently had um, a building initiative meeting in the morning where each grade level met with their uh, teacher leaders, our leaders that are leading the advisory curriculum and helping us get all the information out that they need just to provide feedback from the teachers on how it's working. And you know, they were able to share success stories and, and even stories of um, you know, here's some things we need to improve on because we know something that's new, there's always area for improvement. So we're constantly looking at that and talking with teachers with that. We'll do some surveys with teachers and students um, as we go along this process this year. Some of the social emotional competencies that um, students will be diving into this year are self-awareness, uh, the self-management piece on you know, how, how do I go about my school day and make sure I'm doing everything I need to do when I need to do it, the social awareness aspect of it, and then those relationship skills so our students feel like they're more connected, and then just making responsible decision making. And then finally, uh, the character development that um, it coincides with, uh, we look at patience and kindness, honesty and respect, selflessness, forgiveness, commitment and humility. So those are the character development skills that are intertwined with the social and emotional curriculum throughout the whole year. There are 26 lessons in this uh, program and we've, we've got a lesson a week and then sometimes when there's a short lesson that's why it might be when we have a virtual lesson or a virtual assembly, some of those character, character things. One of the key differences um, from the advisory this time than we've uh, exercised in the past is the fact that we do have advisory meeting every day uh, so that it becomes a habit, that it becomes a routine. 
Also, the inclusion of this uh, curriculum that we're working, working with in addition to the uh, check and connects that we have going on um, gives it, in my opinion, that backbone, that thing to build off, uh, teaching some skills that we try to teach in other courses uh, that are very content rich. Uh, so it gives us this 25 minute period uh, to work on those social and emotional learning skills that our kids need so badly. Mr. Bransrud, could you repeat the first thing that you said there? I'm sorry, I missed it. One of the first things that's different about this and we've done before is that it meets on an everyday basis. Um, we've had advisories in the past that you may recall that met once a week, for example, instead of every day. Thanks. And with that, I will open it up to any questions that you might have about our high school advisory. Are there any questions for the presenters? Oh, sure. I have a couple. <laughs> Fire away, Gene. Fire away. Right. <laughs> yeah, it's a 25-year veteran of the high school. I've been through this before. So I'm wishing you good luck with this. I hope it works out. As part of the board's strategic plan was to work on um, class sizes, alternative ed. So like any problem, there's multiple uh, solutions to a problem, and this may be just one of them. A um, couple of questions to start. So what's the consequence for skipping if a student should just not show up? Right. Administratively, we treat advisory like study hall. Um, study hall is a non-graded. Uh, you don't receive any credit for attending that, but it is expected that you attend. Um, just like uh, lunch as a freshman or sophomore, um, or study hall for any student that has that on their schedule, advisories on their schedule. So time put back in, um, conversations about why they feel it's you know, not a necessary thing. We understand this is new. Um, probably the most you know, difficult classes as seniors who might have a couple of open blocks um, on either side of the advisory it's been most cumbersome for as far as their schedule goes. Most of those fall into that dual credit category. Um, usually students will have a third block or a fourth block class, so the advisory will butt up to one or the other of those classes. But there are a few kids um, who have really accelerated and are off our campus, you might say, for dual credit classes. And for the most part, they've been very good about coming in. Uh, I'm not going to say that we haven't heard some criticism uh, about the advisory and why we're doing it. And we know that that is going to be a process. We don't expect kids to just jump on this right away and say, yeah, this is a great thing. But at the end of the year, throughout the year, we're going to survey them again and say, what are you learning? What are you finding out? So that we can get some help too as we mold this thing as we go. And consequences, I assume, for being um, disobedient, uh, to, uh, disrespectful during this time, it's the same as class? Same as a classroom, absolutely right. I did go to the Character Counts website and I printed off their nice little booklet here. It's quite comprehensive. It's interesting. Um, as I mentioned before, there are multiple solutions to problems, particularly at high school level, middle school level, teens. Um, one of the solutions that I still think we need to work on, and that is overcrowded classrooms. So I did go through the list of uh, teachers, size of the classrooms, and I still count about 100 that are quite large, 28, 29, 30, 31, and so on. Um, the issue here is that this impacts regular students and freshmen in particular because it's those classes that are quite large. It's the classes of geography, history, U.S. government, sociology, English, Spanish, German, biology, zoology, a couple of chemistry sections, uh, algebra, geometry, pre-calc, and most troubling is freshman speech. So these are classes in which we have regular students. These are students that often struggle. And when you pack 30 in a room, it's difficult for a teacher to really help a student. And so part of the solution, besides advisory, is we need to reduce class sizes. No question. 
um, as 16 years as a drama director and then teaching numerous classes, well over 200 a year as a librarian. Um, class sizes make a difference and contact in extracurricular activities really makes a difference. You can really build excellent relationships. Uh, I want to mention speech class again for freshmen. 30 in a class, we have several sections that are that large. It's much too large. There are some staff that are actually certified who have very small numbers who could, I think maybe we need to look at some repositioning there. Um, another issue is the size of the classrooms and the remodel. We didn't make any larger classrooms, so we're packing 30 students, about that number, into about 760 square feet. And if we look at classrooms across the street at Lake Area, they're being built at about 1,000 square feet approximately and larger. So we didn't build anything larger. Um, some other issues that uh, play into this, we still don't have alternative ed. We had it up till 2007, and it was a great help. Many other schools have it. We don't. The state has pretty much left us alone. Um, they haven't been a big help. They've abandoned us. When teens are in trouble, they're basically sentenced to school. There, there is no kind way to say that. It's, it's a tough issue. We're, we're the forefront. So I wish you good luck with this. Um, it is part of the strategic plan to look at some of these issues. And pass it to Mr. Iverson in case he has any questions. You know, Gene, I'll comment on, on, on your statements just generally by saying, you know, I appreciate that. Um, the high school is always looking for a way to continue to challenge those students uh, that are already excelling and doing well by finding classes that are, are more difficult and challenging for them to prepare them for their next step, yet looking for ways to help those students that do struggle. Um, and education and learning is difficult for them uh, to find those resources and those avenues. And we will continue to work on that this year. Yep. I like, I, I like the character development concept of, of the eight um, different uh, things that you're focusing on here. Um, and one of the questions I was going to ask is, how is this going to play out over the four years? I mean, is it going to be difficult? But you answered that by saying they, they build on these these concepts, but they have lessons designed for each each uh, each, each grade level. So obviously, um, you, you've done your homework in, in selecting this. Um, I have to say that I, I came in as a skeptic based upon my previous experience. Um, advisory does not rank high on my list in, in um, my experience as a high school teacher. Um, but I, I think you've done your homework here, and I wish, wish you uh, best of luck with this. Thanks, John. One of the things I also want to point out is we're not sugarcoating anything here. We're not trying to hide anything. When it came to the naming of this, we said, let's call it what it is. It's advisory. That's what it is. It's meant to advise kids. We have advisors. We have wonderful adult professionals in our building that are excellent role models for our students. And the very things that you're talking about, um, those things need to be taught. Parents are helping us teach these at home, and we need to reflect on them at school. And uh, not only can we raise more content-driven, academically successful students, but also students with great character development. There's another concern I'll just add. Um, going through the, the teacher schedules, quite a few teachers have uh, 90 or so students a day. And then you add in another 20 with advisory, so that's well over 100, 119, 120. Um, that's kind of a heavy load. That's, that's another prep, it's another lesson. Uh, when we went to block scheduling, we were promised as faculty and teachers that we would have 25 students per class and no more than 75 a day. Well, we're way past that, way past. So building relationship with students still comes down to smaller numbers. And I'll put 43 years of 
behind that of teaching. Thank you, Jean. Any other questions, comments? Others, I've got uh, just a couple things. Um, so I'm, I'm, a, I'm a big believer in self-improvement, professional development. As Dr. Danielson knows, that's been a, a priority for me. And when I look at this list, patience, kindness, honesty, respect, selflessness, forgiveness, commitment, humility. Uh, there's eight pretty solid topics on there, and I can use improvement in all eight of them. I know it. Um, and I'm sincerely wishing you the best of luck with this program. I know that there's been some skeptics. I know that there's been some concerns shared from here and there. Um, but I also am a believer that when you think back to the question that you first posed of, is there someone in your life that you can count on or an adult that you can count on, if you can make a difference for just one person, one student, with this 25 minutes a day, you have the ability to make a meaningful impact that will last a lifetime. And I'm hoping that you will have some major success stories to share at the end of this uh, program. To their point, I'm also hopeful that you'll have an ability to look back and reflect and assess and grade yourself on how you can improve it and add value and make sure that it's not just a time suck for 25 minutes throughout the day, that you've got your staff engaged and taking ownership of this 25 minutes, that it's not just a hidden 25 minutes of free time for everybody involved, uh, because if that's happening, then 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 we're not helping anybody. And, and those moments of change that we can make a lasting impact uh, are just quickly going by the wayside. So I'm, I'm excited for you. I wish I had this program back when I was in high school. Um, and I wish you the best of luck. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Stuart. All right, we will move on to item 6.1, approval of the bills. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the bill. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item 6.1 and the bills have been approved. Item 6.2, with personnel, and welcome, Mr. Stacy. Hello there. Um, I bring forth two resignations for you to consider. Okay. Uh, we have the resignations presented on the screen and in your packets. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve the resignations. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Uh, the resignations have been approved as presented. Item 6.2.2, contract recommendations and addendums. Yeah, we have assorted uh, contract recommendations and addendums for you to consider as well. Okay. Is there a motion to approve? I'll make a motion to approve. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions, comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Item 6.2.2 has been approved. Moving to item 6.2.3, leave of absence. Yes. You have in your packets uh, a request for a leave of absence uh, from Gretchen Koopmans. And uh, what she is requesting is the year's leave of absence for the 21-22 school year and brought to the board as um, consideration to because she did miss the March 1st deadline of 2021, but has some extenuating circumstances due to a uh, complication in her pregnancy and is requesting the leave and asking you to consider that, and that would be considered retro retroactive for the school year, uh, in which case she would need to then notify us on March 1st, 2022, if she intends to return for the 22-23 school year, and we are, we are recommending that for approval. Okay, thank you. Is there a motion to approve the leave of absence as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the leave of absence. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> That motion has been approved. Item 6.2.4, approve of the volunteer list. 
Yes, we have a list of volunteers from every school and every program that we have in the school district right now that we would like you to consider and approve. Okay. Is there a motion to approve the volunteer list? I make a motion to approve the volunteers. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Uh, second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions, comments? I'll just state on behalf of the board and everyone that's uh, involved in the district, we appreciate people giving of their time. Certainly don't have to, and um, uh, yet they do, so we appreciate that. Thank you very much. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? The volunteer list has been approved. Item 6.3, financial report. Thank you. The fiscal year ending 2021 annual report of the Watertown School Di District has been submitted and approved by the Department of Education. The following report provides a briefing as to where each fund ended in regard to expenditure and revenue percentages, ending fund cash balances and additional information included in regards to the 2022 adopted fiscal year budget, as well as the district's current strategic planning document. Please note that the PDF version of this report can be found on the district's website. The major governmental funds, including the general fund, capital outlay, special education, and the operation of Lake Area Technical College, all had an increase to fund balance percentages for fiscal year ending 2021. The general fund originally anticipated a use of cash on hand. Budgeted mod modifications made throughout the fiscal year were in large part contributed to the increased significant federal funding in the amount of $2.2 million awarded to the district in relation to the coronavirus relief funds and ESSER allocations. This allocation of federal funding made up 8% of unanticipated revenue. The June 30th, 2021 ending fund balance of the general fund was 32.43% of the fiscal year's expenditures. This is an increase of 4.23% from fiscal year 2020, in which the district was operating at a 28.2% fund balance. Future anticipation of this fund includes funding under ESSER Round 3 to offset identified positions that assist with learning and academic loss. This anticipation and funding is estimated at $712,000 per year through fiscal year 2024. This accommodation of federal funds will minimize the effect of the anticipated enrollment loss of 50 to 75 students spanning from FY22 to FY24, as well as to decrease in whole or a portion of transfer from the capital outlay fund in order to maximize anticipated future capital outlay and facility planning. The capital outlay fund budgeted an increase to revenue activity to accommodate support from capital outlay certificates for the funding of the high school renovation project in the amount of $15 million. The ending fund balance of this fund as of June 30th is $23.2 million with notation that 9.7 is held in trust for the crossover advance refunding. A clear identifier of this fund is cash on hand with $14 million noted at fiscal year end. The available cash on hand includes a 43% set aside or $6.3 million to accommodate fulfillment of the renovation project and usage of the capital outlay certificate funds. The special education fund originally anticipated a use of $353,000 in reserves. With expenditures at 89.53% of anticipated, this fund had a decline well below the adjusted budget. The revenue exceeding expenditures created an ending fund balance of $608,000. This fund balance is 9.10% of the 2021 expenses, an increase of 5.9% over last fiscal year. A comfortable level of funding operation within the special ed fund would be a 15% fund balance operation. As we move forward into the, into the new fiscal year, the district continues to monitor this fund with continued ways to accommodate the needs of its special education students at an, at an affordable means. The financial activity of Lake Area Technical College reflects a financial increase of $2.4 million. Increased federal revenue in the amount of $2.1 million related to CARES allocations made up 8% of their anticipated revenue. The June 30th, 2021 ending fund balance of LATC was $10 million, an increase from last year's ending fund balance of 7.6. Attributed to the fund balance increase is also made up of a significant decrease in travel at 16.64% of budgeted. Buildings and improvements came in at 66% due to the project start dates not taking place until after June 30th, and therefore the expenditures taking place in the new fiscal year. Future anticipation of this fund includes additional federal funding under HERF Round 3 in the amount of $2.2 million. This accommodation of federal funding will maximize the ability to accommodate building expansions with localized revenue. 
Other activity noted within the report includes budgeted activity as well as profit loss statements within the enterprise funds of both K-12 and LATC, including the operation of K-12 nutrition, arena concessions, driver's ed, preschool, and for LATC, the bookstore, food service, and educare. Major identifiers that I would like to point out include that K-12 Nutrition operated under the federally approved operation of SSO, in which provided free breakfast and lunch meals to students for the year. LATC Food Service received a, fed a federal payment as supported under HERF or CARES allocations to accommodate revenue loss in, in the amount of $188,000, significantly assisted this fund. LATC Educare also received federal support under CARES that contributed to an increase to cash balance. I'd be happy to answer any questions should you have any. Any questions? Thank you very much. Uh, so we need to approve that, correct? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so is there a motion to approve the financial report as presented? I'll make a motion to approve the financial report. Uh, motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second by Mr. Iverson. Any questions, comments? Just make a comment uh, and a note of appreciation for Ms. Clausen there. This is a huge undertaking each year and uh, um, an excellent looking report and uh, confirmed by the state too as that was approved, so. Excellent. All those in favor? Aye. All those opposed, same sign. The financial, financial report has been approved. Thank you. Item 6.4, 6 second reading of the policies. Yes, you have uh, two policies that were uh, brought last month, both dealing with participation of alternative instruction students. They were online with no public comments on that and brought to you with no changes from the first reading, so we recommend your approval of those. Is there a motion to approve item 6.4.1 as presented? I'll make a motion. Motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Iverson. Any questions or comments? Just a clarification. We're approving both. Oh, I'm sorry. I would be, we need two, two separate motions on those, please. Yes, uh, I thought that was, is what she had made the motion I'll make for. a motion on both of them, sorry. Well, actually, no, just, just individually, one, but I, do the, I, I think uh, it was good. Do 6.4.1 first, the IB, IHBH first. So we have a motion for IHBH participation of alternative instruction students, correct? By uh, Mrs. Lohr. Yes. Okay, and that answers your question. So uh, second by Mr. Iverson. Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Item 6.4.1 has been approved, and then now on to the second one of 6.4.2, Dr. Danielson. Yes, same, same uh, status was put online, no public comments, and uh, again, so we recommend for your approval. Okay, so there a motion to approve uh, item 6.4.2 as presented. I will make a motion to approve the South Dakota High School of Hippies eligibility. Okay. Uh, we have a motion by Mrs. Lohr. Is there a second? Second. Second by Ms. Moulton. Any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion is approved. Item 6.5.1, open enrollment requests. We have no open enrollment requests this month. Okay, that one's easy. 6.5.2, 13 10s. Yes, there are two 13 10s included this month, and we recommend both of those for your approval. Okay, is there a motion to approve as presented? I move we approve the student assignment request as presented. Motion by Ms. Moulton, is there a second? Second. Second by Mr. Iverson, any questions or comments? Hearing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Item 6.5.2 has been approved. Moving along into the communications section, uh, Dr. Danielson. Yes, uh, as I've notified you of, there are two different uh, ASBSD legislative nights uh, in our area. The first one is Wednesday night, this Wednesday in the 13th in Aberdeen. And then the second one that would be close to us would be October 27th. I believe there was a, an invite that was circulated 
from the DeSmit School Board, inviting school board members to attend in DeSmit. If you are interested, school board members, let me know on either of those and I can get you registered. And then just to announce that on, we will have a second meeting in October on the 25th at 5.30 p.m. to look at the co-op facility planning report. Um, and we'll have that one in the admin office of the Watertown School District offices. And then just to reiterate uh, from the earlier in the agenda, the October 21st at noon meeting with a joint meeting with the Watertown School Board and the Strategic Advisory Council over at Lake Area. So we'll get you details on both of those second meetings as appropriate. Got it. Excellent. Uh, thank you, Dr. Danielson. We will move to item 7.2. Are there any members of the school board that wish to report anything to the superintendent at this time? Okay. Then we will seek a motion to adjourn. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Hey, Tammy. <laughs> motion by Tammy. Is there a second? I think we've second. got a second by Mrs. Lohr, okay. Uh, any questions, comments? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are adjourned. <laughs>